Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers trespassing, securing firearms, and identifications, and it's brought to us by Jesse Cortez's channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. Before we dive into the interaction, I want to give a big thanks to the sponsor of this episode, Raycon. I've been using Raycon earbuds for years now, and I take them everywhere I go. In fact, I have a pair of Raycons for the gym and a pair for the office. Raycons are so affordable that you can get a pair and a spare and still pay less than you would with some of those other more big name tech brands out there. You can enjoy up to eight hours of playtime, 32 hours of total battery life, seamless Bluetooth pairing, and booming bass, along with optimized gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit. They're the perfect earbuds for listening to music or catching up on your favorite podcasts without breaking the bank. Right now, Raycon is offering members of the ATA community a 15% discount on your purchase when you click on the link in the description or go to buyraycon.com slash audit. Raycon is on a mission to prove that you shouldn't have to pay an arm and leg for quality sound and essential smart tech listening features. So go to buyraycon.com slash audit for 15% off your order. Plus get free domestic or flat fee international shipping. Thanks again to Raycon for sponsoring this episode. On September 29th, 2022, Georgia resident Jesse Cortez and his partner decided to visit a cluster of historic homes in downtown Morrow, Georgia, known as The District, after noticing a for lease sign and having a potential interest in the property. Although the area was previously held open to the public, a few months before this incident, teenagers were arrested on arson charges for burning several of the historic buildings in the area. As a result, the area was closed to the public, and no trespassing signs were posted on the property. While Mr. Cortez and his partner were looking at the buildings, believing themselves to be in a public park, Chief Michael Crumpler of the Morrow Police Department stopped Mr. Cortez with an unmarked vehicle, and Mr. Cortez began to film the encounter. Yeah, you ain't do you can't you can't pull somebody over Tom. I gotta pull because he's the police. I ain't do anything wrong. Let me see your driver's license. I don't gotta give you nothing, huh? Okay. All right, have Go a good day. Go. I will. I will. Okay. You can't sit here and threaten people. I didn't threaten you. I said pull off. You said what? You said leave. Watch what's gonna happen. Yeah, I haven't done nothing. I need a unit out here, right? See what I mean? You got to get a unit out here. For what? Because you almost hit me coming around this corner. No, I didn't. Right I didn't hit you. I, just... I didn't hit you. I need to see your driver's license. I don't need sir. to give you anything. Okay. Talk to him. Mm -hmm. Check him out. Driver's license, please, sir. For what? Why are you stopping me? I'm stopping you because you're a suspicious vehicle. <laughs> Being suspicious is not a crime. I need to see your driver's license. You can go f off or call, call, your, call your supervisor here. I'm the chief of police. Oh, There's you need to no call somebody else. Where's 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 the patrol car? Well, I need a unit here. Ask them to uh, pick up the, the pace. You just can't stop people and just tell them pull over. Don't I you just, see the lights? You absolutely can't just I no. Can. You can't. Obviously you don't understand Georgia law. No, you sir. can't. Obviously, you don't understand Georgia law. Can I see your driver's license, please, sir? I'm gonna wait for a unit to come here. Someone in a unit come. No problem. Man, they could have got some business if they would have been polite. Maybe not. Hey, bro, how you doing? Hey, what's happening? Hey, not much, man. Hey, look, they're just trying to ID you, man. You got your license on you? Yeah, and I asked them why. Yeah, I mean, because this city property over here, mm -hmm. and it's not that you're necessarily doing anything wrong by driving by, but the the city management over here, they're just real particular about people being in here when there's okay. no event going on. Okay. Anytime there's just like a random car coming through here, mm -hmm. we always respond over here just to ID whoever's over I here. I do want to ask, so is he the chief? Is yeah, he? So okay. The chief of he just kind of got all kind of aggressive. You know what I mean? All right. Well, I mean, like I said, that's... And, and, and me, I want to, you know, I don't want to provide anything unless I did something wrong. Mm -hmm. If I didn't do anything wrong, I would like to be on my way. Like I said, you are in a, a closed city property right okay. now. Okay. So, so you guys can ask not, me to leave and I can leave. Well, it's not, like I said, it's not that you necessarily did anything wrong. Then I would like to be on my way. Well, and, and, and the thing is, is we saw that it's uh, for lease. We came here to inquire about it being for lease and he came out very aggressively towards us. I got you. And I got but, all on tape. But look, anybody that's over here when there's not an event going on, we ID who's ever over here. What law is that? We mean what law? What, it's what, not a law. So, okay. So why do I have to ID? That's my question for you. I mean, you had no legal reason to be here. Though. I mean, this isn't this isn't locked or closed or anything, correct? And I mean, it it says, it's also it says posted it's for no lease. trespassing. Because I'm more than welcome, but I want to do it that I'm doing it under threat of arrest. That's he threatened me. Mm -hmm. Okay, well I'm not threatening. Okay. I'm just asking. So the then ID. I would like to be on my way. I don't want to. Georgia's not a stopping ID state, is it? 
Yes, if the police get out with you, you That's have to not. provide your ID. That's not. So I'm gonna give you my ID under a threat of arrest, right? Because that's what's gonna yeah, happen if I don't give my ID. If I don't give my ID, that's what happens, correct? I mean, you will be identified one way or the other. What's going on? What's Hi, I'm Major Woodall. I'm the number two of the department. Okay, how you doing? I heard you yelling back at the chief that you didn't believe he was the chief of police. I mean, he's not in. He a, doesn't have to. No policeman has to. They just have to say they're the police. Man, get the hell out of here. So Turn somebody says, so somebody Turn just has to say out. they're the cop. Turn that off and get out. Come on now. So somebody can come up and say, I'm a police and I'm supposed to believe them? Turn that, get out of the car. It's crazy. Here we go. Are you having problems identifying? you have your ID on you or not? I do have my ID on Get it out. That's state it. law. <laughs> we have probable cause to arrest what you. What probable cause is that? Trespassing. Major Woodall claims that the officers have probable cause to arrest Mr. Cortez for trespassing. Now, as we've discussed before on ATA, the fact that property is owned by the government does not necessarily mean that it must be held open to the public. And to this end, the Supreme Court held in the 1966 case of Adderley v. Florida that nothing in the U.S. Constitution prevents a state from enforcing its general trespass statute on property. Under Section 16-7-21 of the Georgia Code, quote, A person commits the offense of criminal trespass when he or or she, knowingly and without authority, enters upon the land or premises of another person after receiving notice that such entry is forbidden. Section 16-1-3 of the Georgia Code defines the term person as including the government or a government agency. And in the 2004 case of Strange versus Housing Authority, the Georgia Court of Appeals recognized that in the trespass statute, now quoting, the phrase premises of another person includes property owned by the public. Therefore, it is highly likely that a court would conclude that the fact that Mr. Cortez was on public property did not mean that he could not be charged with trespassing. Likewise, it is also probable that a court would determine that the no trespassing signs were sufficient to put Mr. Cortez on notice that his entry to the district was prohibited. In the 1983 case of Rayburn v. State, the Supreme Court of Georgia determined that, quote, Notice is an essential element of the offense of criminal trespass and must be proven by the state beyond a reasonable doubt at trial. Inherent in the statute's notice provision is a requirement that notice be reasonable under the circumstances as well as sufficiently explicit to appraise the trespasser what property he is forbidden to enter. Building on this case, the same court held in the 2018 case of State v. Harper that, quote, while giving a person express notice through spoken or written words that his or her entry is prohibited can be sufficiently explicit and reasonable, that does not mean that spoken and written words are the only means by which reasonable notice could be given to a would-be trespasser that would explicitly notify that person that his or her entry is prohibited. In the Harper case, the court determined that a locked door was sufficient to put an individual on notice that entry into a home was forbidden. And given the far more un ambiguous nature of no trespassing signs, it is likely that a court would find they were sufficient to notify Mr. Cortez that entry to the district was now prohibited. However, if he were charged with trespassing, Mr. Cortez could argue that he did not have the criminal intent necessary to sustain a conviction, given his apparent failure to notice the no trespassing signs and his belief that the district was a public park. In the 1989 case of Bowman v. State, the Supreme Court of Georgia concluded that an individual cannot be convicted of trespassing if the state does not prove that they acted with a specific intent to violate the law, citing the 1913 case of Hayes v. State, in which the Georgia Court of Appeals stated that, quote, an act which might appear to be trespass is not in fact a trespass if the act is committed in good faith by one who actually and sincerely believes that he is authorized to do the act in question. Nonetheless, it should also be noted that the fact that Mr. Cortez may have had a valid defense would not necessarily negate the officer's probable cause to arrest, because, as the Supreme Court noted in the 2018 case of District of Columbia v. Westby, quote, Probable cause does not require officers to rule out a suspect's innocent explanation for suspicious facts. And therefore, a court would likely agree that the officers had probable cause to arrest Mr. Cortez under these circumstances, despite Mr. Cortez's potential defense. Step over here, man. Oh, you see where I'm getting out of the gun? That's why I'm going in your vehicle. You gonna get it? You gonna get it back? You gonna get it back? Here you go. You need to cooperate. Okay. 
One of the officers opens the door to Mr. Cortez's vehicle and takes out his firearm, then removes the bullets and hands them to Mr. Cortez's partner, who remained in the vehicle. In the 1983 case of Michigan v. Long, the Supreme Court concluded that although a valid vehicle stop based on reasonable suspicion does not automatically give the police permission to search the passenger compartment for weapons, now quoting, the search of the passenger compartment of an automobile is permissible if the police officer possesses a reasonable belief that the suspect is dangerous and the suspect may gain immediate control of weapons. Based in part on this decision, the Georgia Court of Appeals determined in the 2006 case of Megacy v. State that it was constitutionally permissible, quote, for an officer involved in a traffic stop to temporarily take physical possession of a firearm in a vehicle, even though the driver has not given the officer reason to think he is dangerous. Holding that, now quoting again, when an officer is informed during a traffic stop that a weapon, licensed or otherwise, is in the vehicle, the officer may secure the weapon for his protection, because, now quoting again, a reason reasonably prudent man in the officer's position would be warranted in believing that, because of the weapon's presence, his safety was in danger while he executed the roadside stop. Accordingly, a court adopting this reasoning would likely conclude that the officer was within his authority to temporarily remove the firearm from the vehicle as a safety precaution, particularly given the fact that Mr. Cortez's partner remained in the vehicle with access to the loaded gun after Mr. Cortez stepped out. <laughs> We have significant crime in this area, and we need to cooperate. When a police officer identifies himself as a police officer in the state of Georgia, they don't have to immediately come up to say it. What you, however, have to comply. So you have obstructed law enforcement so far. We understand the limitations of the Fourth Amendment and all constitutionality involved in policing and detaining people in America. You are in violation of state law and city ordinance. Okay? That's fine with me. Okay. I'm going to decide whether to book you into the Clayton County Jail at this moment, okay? Or let you go on a ticket, or let you go on a verbal. You got a good idea? I got it. That's yours. You're being warned not to come on these premises again. It's all videoed by us. You can turn your stuff off. No, it's all right. Yeah, I'm going to give you. I'm your stuff gets you. lost sometimes. No, I didn't. I'm writing you a ticket with the least amount of fine possible. And I'm not taking you to jail on a state charge of obstruction. Okay. Okay, when blue lights come on, you have to stop and yield to them. Okay, when blue lights come on, you have to stop and yield to them. When the police give you instructions to demand your identification, you must present it in accordance with state law, especially when there's articula uh, probable cause. But as little as, as little as reasonable articulable suspicion. So Georgia is a must present ID state. Okay. Major Woodall claims that Georgia is a quote-unquote must-present ID state, and that individuals must show their identification when police officers have probable cause or reasonable suspicion. Now, although Georgia does not have a specific stop and identify statute that explicitly requires individuals to identify themselves to law enforcement during a Terry stop, courts have concluded that individuals can be convicted of violating section 16-10-24 of the Georgia Code, which states that, quote, a person who knowingly and will willfully obstructs or hinders any law enforcement officer in the lawful discharge of his or her official duties shall be guilty of a misdemeanor for refusing to identify themselves or provide identification under certain circumstances. For instance, in the 1989 case of Bailey v. State, the Georgia Court of Appeals upheld an obstruction conviction against an individual who twice refused an officer's request for identification, declaring that the trial court was authorized to find that the citizen's refusal to identify himself was more than discourteous and that it actually hindered and obstructed the officer in her investigation. However, as the U.S. District Court in the Northern District of Georgia distinguished in the 1998 case of Gaynor v. Douglas County, quote, under Georgia case law dealing with the offense of obstruction, the standard for determining whether an officer was lawfully discharging his duties such that a refusal to provide identification would constitute obstruction is whether a reasonable suspicion existed to stop the individual charged with obstruction. Now, based on this precedent, it is likely that a court would conclude that Mr. Cortez could be convicted of obstruction for his refusal to identify himself because, as we discussed earlier in this episode, it is probable the officers had at least reasonable suspicion to detain Mr. Cortez to investigate whether he was trespassing. Additionally, Section 40-5-29 of the Georgia Code requires that, quote, 
Every licensee shall have his or her driver's license in his or her immediate possession at all times when operating a motor vehicle. And that, now quoting again, every licensee shall display his or her license upon the demand of a law enforcement officer. Accordingly, even if Mr. Cortez's refusal to provide identification did not constitute obstruction, because he was operating a motor vehicle when he was detained on probable cause or reasonable suspicion of criminal activity, it is likely that a court would determine he was required to display his driver's license to the officers. Arguing with the police doesn't get you anywhere. The judge is who you argue with. Do what the police say on scene. I'm not taking you to jail and I'm not impounding your car. I'm giving you the disorderly conduct city citation with a very low fine. And you respect the judge and you throw yourself on the mercy of the court. Maybe the judge will toss it. I wouldn't have any problem with that. But you have to understand that you must obey law enforcement because we're a nation of laws. If you'll just sign right here, sir, your signature does not admit guilt and only acknowledges receipt of the charge, then you may require that I appear. And if, there, if I can get ID from you guys or a business card from you, can you take a picture video. Mark Woodall, two D's in Woodall. Badge number 2602. At Mr. Cortez's court date, a judge found him guilty of disorderly conduct under Section 11-1-1 of the Morrow Code of Ordinances, which states that, quote, It shall be unlawful and disorderly conduct for any person to obstruct or hinder a code enforcement officer of the city of Morrow by violence, threat of violence, or by fleeing or by any other unlawful means when such officer has properly identified themselves or is otherwise identifiable as such, and is engaged in the lawful performance of his or her official duties. As a result of his conviction, Mr. Cortez was required to pay a $575 fine. On January 9th, 2023, Mr. Cortez posted his footage of the interaction on his YouTube channel, and several news outlets reported on the interaction. Mr. Cortez told Atlanta news station 11 Alive that he is considering filing a lawsuit, but he has not been able to find an attorney willing to take on his case. The Morrow Police Department conducted an internal review of the encounter, and Commander J.W. Guest reported that the investigation found that none of the officers acted in the wrong or violated Mr. Cortez's constitutional rights. As of the date of writing this episode, by the way, Google still lists the district as a, quote, park in Morrow, Georgia. Overall, the Morrow officers get a B-, minus because although they most likely remained within their constitutional authority throughout their interaction with Mr. Cortez, the multiple officers involved maintained a hostile and unprofessional demeanor throughout the encounter, with one officer even directing profanity at Mr. Cortez, and demonstrated concerning authoritarian viewpoints regarding the power granted to police officers. For instance, while he was giving Mr. Cortez his trespass notice and citation, Major Woodall stated that, and I'm quoting, you you must obey law enforcement because we're a nation of laws. And while Mr. Cortez was legally required to identify himself in this situation, Major Woodall's assertion that individuals must comply with every command a police officer makes, and his suggestion that law enforcement is the law, is troubling, and could leave room for significant officer overreach and abuse. Nonetheless, I commend the officers for respecting the bounds of their constitutional authority in this interaction, and would encourage them to improve their professionalism in future encounters. Mr. Cortez gets a C, because although he remained relatively respectful throughout the encounter, he demonstrated a significant lack of understanding regarding the extent of police authority and his constitutional rights, and refused to identify himself to the officers when he was legally obligated to do so. Now, while I sympathize with Mr. Cortez's belief that the officers violated his rights by stopping him and demanding identification, his analysis appears to be based on a misunderstanding of the facts. From Mr. Cortez's point of view, having apparently overlooked the no trespassing signs at the time he was stopped, he was simply existing in a public park, and I can certainly understand why he believed he'd done nothing wrong. However, from the officer's perspective, he was an unauthorized individual in a closed area that had recently experienced a devastating arson incident. And although, as we discussed earlier, he likely had a defense to any trespassing charges that might have been brought against him, a court would almost certainly determine that the officers had the reasonable suspicion necessary to detain and identify him. This encounter demonstrates why it is crucial for citizens to understand that courts interpret the legality of a detention based on the information known to the officers not the information known by the detainee, and even detentions that seem completely unwarranted to the individual being stopped are constitutionally valid when the officers are aware of facts that give them reasonable suspicion, regardless of whether the detainee also knows this information. That being said, I do admire Mr. Cortez's 
his commitment to defending his rights. And I would suggest that he take steps to further educate himself about the requirements of Georgia law and the limitations of the constitutional protections granted to citizens. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic that you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out my second channel for even more police interaction content.